And now let's talk about how to create a voice thread. How to start from scratch if you don't already have one. Students and instructors will do this in the same way, so you don't have to worry about your students seeing something different. Everybody will just come up here and click on Create. Anywhere you see the Create button, as soon as you click on it, it takes you to this screen. The first thing you have to do is add some media to your voice thread. So I can do that by clicking on this big Add Media button and selecting the source of my media. So I could upload from my computer. I could even use my webcam. Uh, we saw that man use the webcam in the previous voice thread. He just recorded directly into it. Um, or you can import by URL if you have the URL to a media file. Um, but my computer is probably the one you'll use the most often because that's where all of your files are. So I could click on my computer in order to open up a browser window here. Or what's new in the new voice thread is I could pull over my finder window here and I could find any of my files and simply drag them over and drop them. So that's a new feature. Just drag any files you'd like to use directly onto VoiceThread and it will upload those for you. So this is again creating the central media. I'm deciding what I want my big central slides to look like. And I uploaded one image and a two-page document. I can drag these files around or these slides rather, to change the order. And I can even delete a slide if I no longer need it. So if I don't need page number two anymore, I can click on the little trash can icon down there and delete it. And now I'm just down to two slides. You can keep uploading slides as long as you'd like until you hit the limit of 500. So again, it's a pretty lenient limitation. Uh, you probably won't ever have 500 slides in a voice thread, um, but it's good to be aware of that just in case. Now we have a question about file size. Um, there is no limit to the size of the file you can upload. The one thing to keep in mind is if you, if you have a really big one, like a really long video, it will take some time. It'll take a long time to upload, and it will probably take a long time to process as well. But it will eventually upload if you just wait for it. Now you can keep doing this again and again until you have all of your slides, uh, but in this case I'm going to just say that I am done. I only need two slides in this voice thread. My next step is to give it a title, so I will click on add a title and description, and you just give it a quick title, and that's all you have to do. Um, you can give it a description and tags if you'd like, but I'm going to just skip those and save. And here you can see my voice thread title in the top left corner and I can always edit that. That's an important thing to keep in mind, that ability to edit. Um, a voice thread is a living conversation space. So if you come back maybe three weeks from now and you decide you really need another slide in here, maybe something was unclear to students you need to offer another explanation, you can always come back and alter the slides here. So just keep in mind you don't have to get everything right the first try. You can kind of get a feel for how things go as the conversation evolves, and you can always come back to this. Once you have added your slides and you have given it a title, the next thing you probably want to do is record a comment. I'm going to do that by clicking on the comment button up at the top. And this opens for me the main voice thread and all of my commenting options. And I'm not going to go over this again because we just covered commenting, but everything here is exactly the same. The voice thread works in the same way, the commenting options work in the same way, and this is a good place for you to record your introductory comments. Let students know what you expect of them, how they'll be evaluated, what type of interaction you want them to make. And then when you're all done, click on this X in the top right corner and it takes you right back to where you started. The next thing I want to do is consider the settings for my voice thread. There are some default settings in place, and for the most part, people really don't need to change them very often. 
but if you do want to change them, click on the Options button in the top right corner and select Playback Settings. And this shows you all of those granular controls for how your VoiceThread behaves. I won't go over all of these because they're pretty self-explanatory, um, and if any of you are familiar with VoiceThread already, they haven't changed. These things mean the same thing in the new version of VoiceThread that they did in the older version. The one I really want to draw your attention to, though, is Enable Comment Moderation. That's what I was talking about a little bit earlier. When you want to not allow students to see one another's comments, this is where you enable that feature. And you want to make sure you enable it before the students start commenting. And that way you're the only person who can see their comments until you go in and you choose to reveal them. When you're all done here, you just click on Update, and those settings are saved for you. Now the very last thing that you have to do is share the voice thread. Up until this point, it's been completely private. Nobody is able to see what I have created. They can't see my comments. Uh, it's just completely isolated to me. And then I get to decide who gets to see it and when they get to see it. There are a number of different ways to share. And when we switch over to looking at VoiceThread in Moodle, you're going to see that the Moodle integration actually takes care of quite a bit of it for you. If you set up an assignment in, in Moodle to uh, link to a specific VoiceThread, it's going to automatically do the sharing work for you. But you can also share on your own whenever you're ready, um, and that will happen here on the home page. So I'm going to skip the share button at the top and go straight back to home. The voice thread I just created was automatically saved for me right there on my screen. And the first sharing option I'm going to use is the ability to share with a course group. I would slide open my sidebar to find all of my courses, and then I simply grab the voice thread and drag it into a course. This gives me a little uh, summary. So here I'm saying my students can view and comment on this voice thread, and then I would click on share. <clears throat> you can also change that. So we talked earlier about how to limit what students can do. If you want to only allow them to view, you would select just the view button. And if you want to go all the way to the other side of that and allow them to edit, you can do that as well. That would mean that every student in my course has a, the ability to edit my voice thread. In most cases, though, you'll probably just want to allow them to view and comment, and that's the default setting. Then I would click on Share, and I get this confirmation in the top right corner that it was shared. And again, just to recap, you grab the voice thread, drag it in, and confirm. So sharing with your entire class is really as simple as that. You just drop it right in. I'm going to pause here for just a minute because I see a few questions coming in. Let's make sure we get to those. Uh, Jessica, it's not currently possible to impose a deadline for submitting a voice thread, but as we'll see when we get to the Moodle integration, there are actually timestamps on when the work was uh, completed, so you'll be able to tell when the students actually did the work, um, and you can also tell when you open up the voice thread. So let's see if I open this one. I don't have any comments on it, but here, let me record a really quick one. And I will stop recording. We'll see when I hover my mouse over the timeline down here at the bottom, I actually get a timestamp for that comment. So I can see that this comment was made at 12.41 PM, which is what time it is where I am. And that will allow you to see exactly when students completed the work. That timestamp is also going to be available when you grade items in the Moodle area. Um, Ellen, you do need to have groups in advance, um, but the Moodle integration is going to set these up for you. So the fact that I teach an ancient literature course in Moodle means that this popped up for me automatically. I did not have to build it so you don't have to worry about that part at all. The only time you would have to manually build a group is if you want to create smaller ones. 
if you want to uh, generate your own smaller groupings of students other than just the main class. Uh, students do, Daryl, see the group the same way you do. So they can click on it to see all the voice threads in it, and they can drag their own into it as well. Now these other two questions that we have so far are about um, how to share with smaller groups, or how to um, make sure that you are not sharing with the entire class at once. The first thing that you can do is go into the sharing menu. And I'll do that by hovering my mouse over the thumbnail and selecting Share. And this takes me into a more powerful sharing area. There's a lot more you can do here than simply sharing a voice thread with the entire course. What I can do is come down to one of my courses. Here is my Behavioral Econ course. I can click on the Members link to see all of the members of the course and I might just click two of my students here, Steve and Ben. I see their names show up in this little summary area on the right. And then I decide what level of permission those two people should have. If I want them to be able to edit, I would click on the pencil icon, <clears throat> and then I just click on share. You can also decide whether or not to notify those people by email. So in this case, I won't. I don't need to notify them. I'm just going to share it silently. And when I click on share, that voice thread was shared with those two individuals, but it was not shared with the entire class. So that's how you'll do it in a more isolated way. Um, Callie is asking about whether or not small groups transfer from Moodle. And they don't, so you're only going to get your main class group. But what you can do is build your own smaller groups in VoiceThread if that's the way you want to go. So I'm going to close out of the sharing menu in order to do that. And when you're ready to create those smaller groups that we've been talking about, click on your email address in the top right corner and come down to Groups and Contacts. This shows you all of your existing groups on the left, including those that were created automatically through Moodle. And to create a new group, you just click on the plus button up here at the top. And you call it whatever you'd like. You can give it a description if you'd like, and a header image, and create that group. So now when I scroll down over here, we'll see that group one was created for me automatically, and I'm currently the only member of it. So my next step is going to be to actually um, get members into this group. The simplest way to do it is to grab the group sign up link in the top right corner. You just grab this and you can paste it in a location for your students to find. It could be in Moodle itself, it could be in an email, in your syllabus, anywhere that you put information for students to find give them the link to uh, self-enroll in the correct group, and they will immediately be added to it. Another way you could get them in there, if you'd like, is to find a group that already has some students in it. I could select two of them, and I could drag them into this group. So you can manually place them in the group that way as well, if you don't want to use the sign-up link. But either way, the end result is the same, and that is that those two students are now a member of my small group. <laughs>